stream. Bang. Ah, looking good. The me, yeah, we're being live streamed. Let's have a look. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I hope everything's all right where you are. Hello. The joy of living. Let's see. Ah, we're on. Good, we're on. Yes, there we My go. My word. Cherry. There we go. It's That's working. Kristin, how are you? I'm really good, actually. Good. Have you yeah. had an interesting week? Yes. It's been... It feels like... I mean, normally, you know, we had the, the full moon eclipse. Yeah. And normally, I don't sleep well on the full moons. But this last week, I've slept better than I have the last year. It's sort of like... It feels like just my nervous system has calmed down and I'm feeling so much more anchored in my body and I mean obviously it's ups and downs and it's but it's like a deeper level of anchoring within me that gives me a calmness sort of to be in everything so fingers crossed that will continue I'm enjoying that <laughs> well but, so yeah, do you I mean, think do you think that you're being changed from within I kind of think so. <laughs> Quite sure. Yeah, it's... I'm I'm absolutely see, there we go. They're here, they're here, whoever they are, they're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, there's a lot going on. It's been like hell this week for me, really. There's been so many things mm. going on. Started yeah. off last Friday about ten o'clock at night with horrendous pains in my abdomen and my chest. Oh. And uh, my wife said, Are You all right? I said, Yeah, I'll be all right. <laughs> she said are you having pains i said yes i am she said get in the car now and i said no no i said i'm i said i'm asking and it's not me heart she said get in the effing car now and she razzed me to the accident and emergency department where there were 130 people waiting right to be seen this is the situation in the uk at the moment Wow. But because I was previously had a couple of heart attacks, they rushed me through and did an ECG on me, which was um, not quite sure. So they said, mm. they said, we'll have to do another one in half an hour's time. So they put me on a trolley in the accident and emergency department. And uh, they were sort of keeping an eye on me, you know, because they were a bit concerned. Anyway, the second ECG or EKG, as it would be in the States, is perfectly normal. My blood pressure was normal. Everything was normal. The blood cardiac enzymes were normal. But mm. they said that your heart's absolutely fine. But there's something going wrong with your liver because all your liver enzymes are deranged. That's what they said, deranged. I said, am I deranged? They said, yes, but so are your liver enzymes, right? So to cut a long story short, I was given a, an emergency slot and had a complete abdominal ultrasound. And I've got rocks in my gallbladder, right? Big mm. stones in my gallbladder. And so the, the treatment would be um, surgical removal of my gallbladder. Um, so um, in the UK at the moment, it's between three and six months now on the waiting list, right? Mm. But they basically said that if, it's, um, if the pain came back again and I started to get a temperature, it could indicate other things like pancreatitis. So get back in straight away. So that's where I am at the moment. Now, I know that some people, and thank you very much for your information and the advice people have sent to me. Um, uh, you know, there is a vibrational therapy that can break stones down, but apparently because my stones are so big, if they lobbed a big chunk off it, that could actually block the bile duct completely and lead to all sorts of other things. And the other thing is that... Um, People have suggested to me that I, I drink uh, all sorts of vinegar and stuff like that. Now, the way I work is I don't know what to do, right? And so if I don't know what to do, I take all the advice, right, and I shove it in my heart, mm -hmm. and I say to me, innate intelligence, please show me what to do and make it clear. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm waiting on at the moment. And I've got no um, – I'm not in opposition to anything at all because medicine has got great things surgery's got great things you know and so is spirit as well so i'm i'm it's in me deep in me now and i'm sure the solution will be given to me you know uh, because i'm not fighting anybody or anything christine i'm i'm just going with what's best for me as directed by my deeper innate inner wisdom whether that be a soul or whatever you know 
So that's where I'm up to. And then, as you know, we had Good to sort of... your wife sort of kicked you in the butt and got you in there. She, she did, yeah. Good job, really, yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, I, funnily enough, I was asking, I was getting these pains, and I asked Spirit, Soul, whatever, I said, uh, I could do with Lee having another ECG, really, to let me know. And, <laughs> and then that happened. I thought, I didn't mean it like that, you know. But no, it's a good it's a good job. And I think it's something that's been going on for a long time, actually, because I always sort of have underlying sort of persistent stomach problems, you know. So, yeah. you know, so that that's I'm not all, <laughs> funny thing is I'm not all, altogether concerned by anything. You know, I think, oh, OK, if it's time for me to go and all that, you know. <laughs> Yeah. you're not going anywhere <laughs> no 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 i know i've got more trouble to cause but then then pumpkin our elder cat she got really unwell as well and um you know i was more concerned about her than myself to be honest with you but um we we have a homeopathic vet that we go to and it's 35 miles away from us you know so she's also receiving both medical treatment and homeopathic treatments as well mm -hmm. but she seems to have perked up a bit and then my mother was on her last legs and she's perked up as well. You know, so it's it's very undulating for me at the moment. But, you know, I'm being honest now in myself, I feel emotionally relatively calm and quite clear minded. And I, and I think that's how it's supposed to be, really. Yeah. And how felt how did you feel when you were in the hospital, like within? Yeah, well, I'm, I was just like a spectator, really. I was thinking this was interesting, really, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm all right. I don't really panic much about anything at the moment. You know, it's uh, but I do see a lot of people around me cracking up for all sorts of reasons. And I, and I know what that is. And I'm going to talk about that on the talk, you know, um, because, you know, today's talk is about narcissism and empathy, mm -hmm. you know. And it seems for some reason that um, the word narcissist seems to be a flavor of the year at the moment because everybody's a narcissist or if they're not. They're all living with one. Or... <laughs> yeah, it's oh. like once someone is rubbing you the wrong way, they're so suddenly a narcissist, and that's yeah. not the case. But it's... No, no. And what I'm going to try and do is based upon, because I, I go into like a bit of a deep sort of meditation, and I say, just show me what you want me to talk about, and let's see where we go from there, you know. So so that's what I'm going to talk about. But, you know, no, in myself, I feel fine. There's um, certain things I'm working towards. You know, I want to get healthy again. I want to get back to my swimming. But to be honest with you, I've wimped out a bit here this year in the cold, you know, because normally I swim all the way through the year. But this year I haven't, you know, yeah. But I normally, I, normally I would have just done it in my swimming trunks, you know, but maybe because I'm getting a bit older, I'm getting a bit more sensible in me in my old age, maybe possibly. I don't know. Yeah. I have not been having a bath during the winter ever. No, no. Oh. I mean, your place, it'd be good. Uh, your place is looking good, isn't it? You know, because it's been like, what, minus 17 and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, and it's like when it's colder than minus 20 in the ocean, it starts, um, it's like a, a fog coming up or smoke coming up out of the water because it's actually colder in the air than in the water. And it's even ice on the on the sea and it's yeah but there are you know saunas uh, saunas down by by in the fjord right. the sites. so you can have a, um have a dip in the ocean and then you can go into the sauna so it's actually a lot of people doing that so i have been curious to try it once but i <clears throat> i haven't had the courage yet yeah no no you're a bit weird aren't you, you like you know don't you smack each other on the bottom with twigs and things like that no <laughs> I heard that you sort of dip in the ice cold, go in the sauna and smack each on the bosom with breath. <laughs> I thought I might give that a miss, I think. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, but um I'm continuing to try and be joyful through all this stuff, you know, because oh, that's so important. And I think just like what you said with how you're feeling inside, even though there's a lot of turmoil around you and even in your body is like I think that's a good good way to see you know to sort of take the the temperature right or where we're at because it's there will always be I think there's so many people waiting for like when I will be healed or when I will just you know be done with this job or when I will just get that job or just get that house or just get a vacation or it's always like when this and this and this is the way I want it to be, then I can relax and then everything, or when we have ascended or when the solar flash has happened or whatever it is, right? And it is, 
that's not the human life. The human life is everything. So it's about us learning to really be connected within, no matter what we are going through. Yeah. So that like, whether it is like, you know, oh, now everything is amazing. Everything is aligned. I'm feeling good. Awesome. That's great. And then the next moment there is a lot of things happening. Can you still, even though you're not enjoying it and it's not where you want to be or what you want to happen in the external, can you be connected within yourself as you're moving through those waves? I think that's like, if we could focus the goal to that and see that as the success rather than reaching whatever next thing, because that that will only perpetuate once you've reached something, it's the next and it's the next and it's the next. I agree, totally. I mean, what I've learned is, and as you know, it's 32 years today um, yes. since I've had to drink of alcohol or the other mind altering substance, you know, or, you know, uh, so what the is clean and sober for 32 years now just living off natural things really and um so thanks very much uh, and it's so it's Everyone. almost like a rebirth for me if, if you were a christian person you could say that i had a sort of um i was born again 32 years ago on this day and it's april fool's day as well so that makes perfect sense to me and <laughs> you know as a sort of hey okay type of person but what i've learned is that I only really live a day at a time and lots of people around me can't get their head around that because they're all worried about the future. And I say, well, that's not happening today. So, and they say, what do you mean? Aren't you concerned? Of course I have concerns, but I don't let the concerns drag me into fear and worry and remorse and guilt and shame, you know? So either I get dragged back to, you know, cause some people will do that to remember how you used to be. And I can hardly ever remember now. It's an effort for me to look backwards now, to be honest with you, you know, but what about the future, you know, so I go into all this anticipation and worry about the future. And then I have to remember that to use a glib phrase that yesterday is history and tomorrow is a mystery. And, you know, to try and focus from one moment to the next in what's happening right in front of me. I think that to me is the only sensible way to live. But you don't just get there by saying it. You have to do things in order to bring you to that present presence moment. Because that's where you get the present, yes. in the present moment, yes. you know. And people say there's, you know, there's no time like the present. And I'd say, no, there's no time in the present, you know. Exactly, yes. Because you know, it's almost like a stationary awareness. Yes. But, but you know, it's uh, it's taken practice. And am I always in that state? Am I like hell, you know? I mean, there's loads of things that come in to try and knock you out, you know, like big waves come in and stuff like that. And I, I feel and sense that there's more and more and more of that that's coming in to try and knock people off their balance, really. you know. And if I was going to say anything that I've learned is know thyself, because I thought I was quite tuned in. And really, I knew who was doing what with who. But about myself, I didn't have a clue, you know. So mm. it's almost like my head was turned the other way around. Have a look at you. Do you know who you really are? Do you know what you like? Do you know that? And I didn't have a clue, you know. And and really, that's what today's talks about is regaining balance in relationships. And mm. the most important thing is you don't have to be in a relationship with somebody else. This is about your relationship with you on the inside. Mm. You know? Because I know now for me, the way I explain it is the soul attracts to it, right, what it needs to experience next because this yeah. is about real secrets of attraction. It's really about a magnetism. The soul brings to it the people, the places, the things, the geographical location, all that, mm -hmm. in order for it to experience what it needs to learn next in its own journey. Yes. And but, but and most people, you know, like me, I didn't have a clue, you know, but it's almost like you get put in a position, almost like a rock bottom, where you have to look in a completely different direction. So rather than looking outwards, it's to look inwards, you know, into your heart, into your soul, mm -hmm. because, you know, that's what's happened to me. And I know thousands of other people who've done the same thing, you know, does, does that are you, or it make sense to you? Oh, definitely. I well, I know that it does. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yes. Yes. And it's it's the same for me, even though my experience was different than yours with, you know, I, I hit rock bottom as well when I 
collapsed and I was in and out of hospitals for two years until they found the diagnosis and then the healing journey after that. It's and of course it's complex, but codependency for me was a big part of it. All those patterns of you know people placing and uh you know just being afraid of conflicts and you know all of those types of patterns that are a part of the whole codependency and of course then you do also experience um the the opposite of the polarity right you you do meet everything of it because it's actually highlighting what's in in here that i need to change and shift yeah 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 no and that's that's what the little chat's about really and uh I'll whiz through it because when we started this off, you and I met in Houston, didn't we? And we we had a, a conscious conversation in light language, didn't we? Which was yeah. completely out of the blue, yeah. uh, but definitely out of the blue. <laughs> and, literally. Yeah, absolutely. Literally, yeah, yeah. It was out of the blue. And, um, and that's how it works for me. It's totally unexpected. So I haven't got expectations of what's happening. I almost like sit there and see what it comes to me next, really, you know. Mm. And uh, I mean, I only ever feel like I'm just learning it one day at a time, really, and stuff like that. You know, and and I've I, just sorry, Christine, what are you trying to say? No, and I think that's like for me. I mean, we are all made up, you know, with different designs. But for me, I I really enjoy learning things. I think like that's one of the one of the main things I need in my life as a person it is to constantly learn and you know I love diving deep I love learning new things so just that part of it as well that that's something that actually helps me if I go into like overthinking or you know because I'm very prone to that it helps me to come back here because I know that right here in this moment there is something that I can dive into you know, I have my small rabbit holes that I can, you know, I can sit with my morning coffee and then it's like, oh my, I want to like feel into this or that's a rabbit hole. I can just, you know, go with my morning coffee. And then that always comes from the present. If not, it's only a control or, you know, something from my overthinking or a fear of something that drives me into. And that does, that always stops somewhere. It doesn't it doesn't expand my awareness in any way. And I feel that difference so well. Um, yeah. No, I agree. And uh, I think the more sensitive we become to our body and our body's feelings, because to me, a sort of negative or tense feeling is an indication that some action needs to be taken by me in order to try and equalize what's going on, really. And I'm going to talk about that now. And basically, you've just stolen everything that I've just about to say. <laughs> but I've put, I've put some pictures to it as well. And on the subject of light language, I know we weren't really on that, but there's loads and loads of different sort of tones and uh, things coming through me now. And when this first started to happen in this way, I was a bit like, what the hell's going on with me? You know, I must be, I must be cracking up again. But I realise now that as I allow it to flow, it seems like gobbledygook to some people, but now it's very important to me now because it's becoming more and more and more important to me that I express all these things from these different levels. And what's happening to me now is, as some of my other friends as well, as they speak the light language, more and more visions are coming to them now as well. You know, So is it time for me to put the thing up, do you think? Yes. Okay. And by all means... Jump in and say stop now. You've gone on too much, you know, and stuff like that. We'll just play it by ear. Yes. Right. So let's have a go. Share screen. There we are. And we'll go here. I've called this episode seven because it's um, it's like a journey. It's like an adventure, you know. It's the next okay. episode. Tristan and Joe explore the blue <laughs> planets, and yeah, and all that <laughs> with the prof. And Dr. Joe, episode seven. And this is again just to recap and bring us back to where we where we are, where we were. Starts off with the I am present, which is source. Some people are calling that God. Some people call that the great central sun, and you know, or source creator. Call it what you like. Try and listen to what it's saying to you if you can. <laughs> and then in the beginning was the word, and then all sorts of stars and star clusters were, were formed. And then they they formed different um, galaxies and solar systems. This is our sun. And then from that there, the sun. So vibrations coming down, high vibrations. 
and vibrations sort of condensing as we get further away from the great central sun um, onto earth and from earth then these vibrations actually impact this is my representation of a human being but what today's talks about is how can we restore balance in relationships first of all starting within ourselves because what's happening in ourselves is really a projection of what's going on on that external outlook that external screen or that's the way i see it anyway and it's really about that there's the the taoist symbol uh, and that's the yin yang symbol and interestingly what that represents basically is a masculine and feminine or if you like the polarity or the duality right with different systems so i'm going to explain a little bit more about this but the int the int important thing is that there's a bit of black in the white and a bit of white in the black and that means there's a bit of feminine in the masculine and a bit of masculine in the feminine to different degrees and that's why we're all completely different because when our soul incarnates it will have different degrees of these within it and that will be part of its lesson or part of its experience that it chose before it incarnated here now these are just my words of where my head is in understanding this but it isn't exactly like that but this is about as simple as i can put it really um so that's what this is about uh, and again here every single cell in the body has a yin and a yang every single organ in the body has a yin and a yang but most of us are born with an imbalance in various components and our job is to realign those by various actions right in order to get closer to the primal vibration which is source consciousness itself and i'm beginning to see that this is not only about conscious expansion but it's about conscientiousness as well so it's expanding consciousness but it's also expanding conscientiousness as well which brings in all sorts of different things so it's a realignment and a recalibration process and that's what's happening at the moment there's no doubt about it that the amount of solar impulses and flashes and things that are happening have increased dramatically over the last few months especially and what's actually happening is this lovely thing here our sun is actually sending out more and more high frequency information and what i didn't realize is this information is actually it's like a truth vibration and it's sending in intelligence and different ways and different waves in order to get us to basically change our behavior <laughs> and that's the last thing that anybody ever wants to do is to change our own attitude i'm talking about me now change my attitude and change my behavior because i prefer to try and manipulate others in order to suit me and so the only reason i get disturbed really is when some person place thing or situation isn't going the way that I expect that it should go, you know. And somebody said to me once is, that's called playing God, that Joe. You know, why don't you just accept what arrives and deal with it from one moment to the next and one breath at a time? And I do feel, Kristen, and, and I know you do as well, is that this is a process that we're all going through. Every single human being on the planet, it, they almost feel like they're going through hell. But it's really to help us to dig deep find our innate unique skills and abilities because it's by using those in the service of improving our own health and helping others that the world will become a better place <laughs> yes so there, and there also you. actually assisting the earth in her expansion uh, of her awareness and consciousness um, absolutely and so you may be called into places geographical locations uh, and you may start to become a grid worker and you mightn't have had any idea like myself. I've been all over the place now, put my hands in the air and tune in and stuff. And apparently that's helping the earth itself to reset in its own primal ley lines, vibrations, dragon lines and all these different things. I really didn't have a clue. 32 years ago, I didn't have a clue about any of this, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm learning more and more all the time. So these yeah, are very this is it's very interesting that you bring it up because I was just like a couple of hours before we started now I was in the trans channeling and some of what I talked about was that the solar flares and all the energies that are coming in right now 
are also and it, it relates to the the change of the behavior that and the patterns that we have because we are supposed to bring this energy through and into the earth because we are it's i mean i, I will have to like re-listen a bit more to to the channeling to go in depth on it but we are starting to play much bigger role in how the energy is moving on the earth um, than what we have been and the ley lines less than they have been because more of it is going to move through us and so for all this energy to move through us we need to clear out whatever is in the way and that is our behaviors our patterns our thought forms our you know all the emotions that we have been holding on to um, so all of this is really related yeah and you know because we get we get information the same don't we it's coming in for the purpose really and i think what's happening is these solar fluxes and solar outbursts from the sun the magnetic energy really and what's actually happening is the magnetism works through our soul the soul or through our meridians through our nadi so that's a magnetic effect which is associated from increasing feminine so it's this is the sacred feminine that's making a comeback basically to reset the balance you know, not to cause a fight or anything like that, because it's compassionate, forgiving, rebalancing, recalibrating energy. But the magnetism is impacted upon the electrical systems of our body. They're masculine systems. Electricity is masculine and magnetism is feminine, really. And so as the magnetism increases, it's impacted upon the nervous system, which is sending signals further into our body. And I know that most of this stuff is happening in the solar plexus. So there's soul and solar plexus so just look what's happened to me i get these massive pains in my solar plexus area to highlight that something is obstructed in me so i i know that everybody you see whoops whoops got a big <laughs> they get a smack on the head there well done son well done <laughs> right so that's what's happening and we can't think our way out of this we have to take action and the way we act is called our behavior so, you know, we can't think our way and hang on to old patterns and old programs that no longer serve us because we're, we're supposed to try now. This is my understanding. You can do what you like, obviously, because we have free will choice. But if you surrender totally and just open up, then a lot of this stuff will be flushed out of you to be replaced by a more um, healthy, less harmful, more flowing, um, joyous state, really. Exactly. Good, isn't it? It's the dance between the, the masculine and the feminine again, right? Within a being, it's the surrender, the openness, which is the feminine. And then when this clearing, you know, whatever layer has been cleared, then it's taking action. It's the masculine energy going out with that. And then again, it's the surrender and then it's the going out. It's, it's, it's a constant dance and a constant pulsation between these energies. It is. And I'm going to talk about that. I mean, I've got pictures to do that. <laughs> and that's what this is all about this is and you can use this if you like as a sort of um a vision sort of code because this is a representation of a soul a completely balanced and you can see that we don't have a soul in us we are within the soul really and these are basically all energetic components at different frequencies you'll see that one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve there's 12 different dimensions without going too deeply into this that all have a different frequency, all have a different intelligence, all have a different uh, f um, light frequency, sound frequency. It's fascinating this really, you know, but that's what we're sort of working towards that if we let go, we'll be recalibrated to um, be unblocked and unlocked from all these different things here. And that's just a more simple picture. <laughs> <laughs> And that's how it works, really. And so there's a there's an expansion of the seven chakra system now into 12 dimensions. But I'll leave this on. If anybody wants to look at this video and stop it, it's fascinating, this. And this is from something called Keylontic Science, which I find fascinating. And I sit with it, and I just ask for guidance and instructions on what it all means. And to a large degree, it's not important. You don't need to know any of this, really. You just need to, in my view, when I say this, I'm not giving you, uh, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just giving suggestions, really. You just need to sit with it and sink deep into your heart and soul and just say, please show me what I need to do next or need to learn next, you know. But I, I find this totally fascinating. 
And it's a bit like this is a simple way to explain it, really. There's these 12 dimensions of consciousness. And what actually happens is uh, when the soul comes here, it isn't perfectly aligned like this. So and things don't fit perfectly well because this one might be over here and that one might be over there. So they're all out of alignment. And really, I think the whole purpose of um, self-actualization and self-mastery is to become a master of um, Merkaba mechanics or energy mastery. Because to me, this is all about becoming aware and being able to use your en energy for positive purpose, really. You know, so energy. So this is more than anything else for me. This is about managing your emotional state because E stands for energy and motion stands for movement. So it's using energy to move in the right direction, you know. And my my thing is, as I said, if you feel emotionally disturbed, there's a recalibration that needs to take place. And that might mean to back off or it might mean to stand up for yourself. So I'm going to talk about that in a second. So that's what it's about. Again, it's about this, really. This is the right hemisphere. This is the left hemisphere. And what actually happens is, as the new, this new information is coming in, the great central sun is moving itself. The whole cosmos is moving. The great central sun is sending information to our sun, which is like a focal point and a magnifying glass for these energies. That's beaming down to us, and it's impacting upon our brain waves as well. So we can't get away with this, in my view. And by the way, I could be totally wrong here. But, you know, so so if it if it sits right with you, keep going. And if not, you can just put it on the back burner for another time, you know, uh, because I'm just learning myself, really. But here's the hemispheres of the brain. And the right hemisphere is associated with creativity. It's associated with dark. It's the yin. It's the visceral components, the deeper organs. It's associated with moisture. And it's associated with the feminine, the creative, wise, feminine, the deep, deep wisdom you know yeah. <laughs> some fellas mightn't like this but hard luck i've got over it as well myself now but it's i think that we need to tune dig, dig, dig deep and listen to the wisdom that's coming from the revitalized feminine component the sacred feminine and some people feel that's associated with the sacred mother with mary magdalene with um you know our lady all these different sorts of things if you're into religion I'm not particularly, I'm into more to do with quantum physics and things like that because I like the science. But what's actually happened is it's almost like the wisdom of here has been obstructed by this overpowered masculine side, really. So this is associated with curves, as it would be. And this is lines, you know. And so the magnetism there is increasing. And it's impacting upon this here, which is basically the neural pathways or the electrical connections in the brain. So you can see here that there's a central point there. And these are associated with the chakras as well. And I'll explain that as I go in a minute. But if this is out of alignment, then obviously we'll be getting more traffic going to this side here, or maybe that side, or a bit up here. What we really need is a dynamic flow between both of them so that they're cooperating. And people don't like the word codependency, but codependency is no problem right if it's a healthy codependency it's when it's faulty and one side wants to be the boss rather than the other side that's when the problem arises really and so how do we get balance well my understanding is we have to get out of our head so we have to come out of 3d and move completely outside of the human thinking and we have to go deeper and ask this innate higher wisdom that's in us to give us a clue you know so it's not just necessarily about bouncing from one side to the other we have to sink deep into our hearts just the way i explain it ask the doors of our heart to open and allow the wisdom of the soul to come through and help us navigate through what we need to do one day at a time one step at a time one breath at a time and there's the overlay i've put this up here it's not exactly like this but this is basically the 12 dimensions of consciousness and we can see here that this is the inroad here. This is this bit here. This is associated with the um, cerebellum, right? And basically the reptilian part of our brain. And there's only one way in here. And this is important, this, as far as I'm concerned, 
But this is where the first step is where we're born. And it's the first step in our incarnation. And this is to do with our physical sexuality. So there's only one or the other here. You can only be one or the other at the physical level. Now, please don't get me wrong here. Let me try and explain what I'm saying. If you've got XY chromosomes, right, then you're a male. And if you've got XX, then you're a female. And you'll have those appendages. You'll either have a sticky out bit or a tucked in bit, right? So that's the first bit. There are some occasions when people are born with two sets of organs. Well, that's another story for another day. But generally speaking, right, this is physical to do with sex. It's the next bit of evolution or development which brings in gender. So this is male and female, but the next bit's to do with gender, right? And gender, you can be both. You can have both components in gender. So you can be physically male, but you can have a lot more feminine hormones, right, which will give you a gender characteristics. And I think that's where a lot of people are getting mixed up here, right? So you can be born a male, you can have a physically male body, but your internal workings may be more towards a feminine. And that's to do with the gender. So this is where masculine and feminine come in. And here's the problem is, right, in order to come to terms with that, we have to, um, so this might be, it goes like this, this is masculine, this is feminine, this is masculine, feminine. So it goes up in like a spiral like that, really. I've tried to use it like this to try and explain it a bit better. And so we come in basically with imbalances that we've got to come to terms with. And if you've been told, if you're a male and you've been, you're very feminine and you've been told to toughen up and you need to go to the gym and you need to do this and you need to join the army now and this, that and the other, then that can be very sort of disheartening, really, if you've got these really powerful feminine urges. And it works the other way as well. You can be born, you can be born female and have a lot of masculine tendencies you know, and that's what makes the difference, you know, and not until you come to terms with what's driving you and you come to terms and accept yourself. Can you be uh, balanced within yourself, you know? And then there's one thing which is what is natural from the beginning. And another thing is what is a trauma response or what made you, for example, a girl becoming very masculine in her vice in which is really a survival mechanism because she had to like get up in her her head you know be very like structured very like those kind of more masculine traits in order to cope with a trauma which is again another layer um all that yeah and it's important and i think more and more people now are coming to terms with who am i really so mm. as we've talked before there's a first nature which is your primal nature your essential self but most of us are programmed and conditioned into being other than we really are so this whole process that we're going through now is we'll basically be forcing people to get honest with themselves at depth. And you know what? Some people around them mightn't like that as they start to change and become more authentic. But hey, ho, that's the way it goes, because I think that we have to clean up our side of the street and we let other people clean up their side of the street. And my experience, and this is the experience uh, with helping other people is as they change, it causes a dynamic sort of cognitive dissonance in the environment, right? And either people either accept it and change themselves or lump it, you know what I mean? And, and this is the difficulty. But uh, the idea would be is to give it a fair trial and see what happens, basically. Yes, and then also be aware of what you make that mean about the other person. Because if I am changing and another person in my life does not like who I'm becoming, yeah. And I start to make that something wrong about them because they don't love me, authentic, the authentic me. Well, I never show them my authentic me. So it's actually not me they they had a relationship with. Yeah. So I can't make that about being something wrong with them. No, no. My big but, thing is, and I was showing this clearly, if you point the finger, you're missing the point because there's always three fingers coming back. So we need to clean our side of the street. And is the, if the dynamic changes and the other person starts to change in a balanced way, then those relationships will get stronger. If they're not willing to change, right, then those those relationships may need to go apart. I don't know what the answer is in each specific case, but I think is we need to step away and give it a fair looking at and sometimes maybe talk it through with somebody that we trust, not accepting any information or advice from them other than 
what does your heart say what is your soul trying to say to you because to me more than anything else is we've allowed our soul's expression to be compressed repressed through fear but sometimes through arrogance as well so this is deep shit deep stuff that's going on really okay so um i've tried to explain this you know really about narcissism so this is masculine this is feminine not male and female masculine and feminine within both of us so we have both of these components now in a normal sort of relationship where there's not much umfiness people can seem to get on quite good but if they've got a bit more sort of if they're a bit more spirited they have more of a dynamic relationship right and you can sometimes get back to normal in that one and balanced right however there's outliers here right and they're right outside plus or minus two standard deviations as they call it you know to use a technical term but this is where narcissism is, right? And this is where the over-empathetic is, right? And this is the difficulty. So the idea would be is to get back to balance. How can we do this, right? And the idea is we can only surrender and allow the soul to guide us. So we need deeper, more intelligent wisdom to guide us, really. I've tried to explain that there. And so it will bring us back. But I've tried to explain this. It's called skewness, right? This is the only way I was given this today is how do you get back to balance? Well, if this is a masculine, we need masculine. We need feminine. And in a dynamic relationship, we need this sort of basically the infinity symbol. It's a dynamic relationship where if they're equal partners, then they'll get through things by um, this. Fe the feminine will apply her skills and attributes the masculine will do his bit and they'll work together mostly harmoniously. However, if there's too much on this side here and not enough on this side, and it can work the other way as well. You know, empaths are not all uh, fem um, females. You know, it works both ways. So the idea would be is how can we find this midpoint? And we basically find it by going into the heart not going into the head because this is left brain. This is right brain. This has got all sorts of ideas. This has got all sorts of ideas, right? The idea would be is to both of them to surrender and ask the heart, what's the way forward really? And here's some characteristics of excessive out of the box, the shadow characteristics of empaths. This is the narcissistic side. And this is the over empathetic side. This is to do with fight and flight. This is to do with rest and digest here. And people can watch this. I, I won't spend too much time on it. But basically, narcissists tend to be grandiose. They have fantasies of this is what I'm going to do. We're going to do this. We'll have loads of money. We'll become famous. Blah, 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 blah. So they are excessive uh, fantasizing. You know, and this happens within the individual as well. Uh, there's a need for admiration. I've just done this, you know, and if you don't say to them, oh, that's really, really good that, you know, they start saying things like, uh, oh, haven't I done well? What's the, you, know, you know, so you, you can recognize these maybe in yourself as well. They have a sense of entitlement. Well, I've done this now and I think that you should do back for me now, you know, so there's interesting things here. Sometimes it can be sort of cold and heartless. They can be manipulating if they don't get their own way. And I'm not talking about external stuff here. I'm talking about what's going on within us that's projecting us onto the screen outside of us to reflect back to us what needs to change in us. That's so important, that really. They have a sense of superiority. They get very envy and jealous. Jealous. Sometimes they get envy, uh, envy and jealous, you know, if we maybe pay attention to somebody else, for example, so this can turn into pathological jealousy. It can turn into all sorts of things like being stalked and all that sort of thing. You know, they can't handle criticism. That's a really difficult one there, where you say, when you try and introduce and you say, no, no, can I just explain it? It's a bit like this. Ooh, I'm not having that. And then this is where gaslighting comes in, where they can turn it back on you and make it feel as though you've been the problem in the first place, right? They can be shallow and sort of cold, but when they don't get their own way, they can become arrogant and angry, right? Here's the other side of it as well. The over-empathetic side feels emotionally drained all the time because they're basically defending themselves all the time. What's going to come up next? Walking on eggshells. So they've got boundary issues because they don't have the strength because they're either knackered because their energy is drained or they're afraid. 
they're always overwhelmed by things, you know, and they can be over dramatic and stuff like that, you know. And they're in this faulty codependency. Nothing wrong with the healthy codependency. It's the faulty one where they cling on to the other one. They cling on. Don't leave me. Don't leave me this way. You know, all that sort of thing. <laughs> I think it's like we need to focus more on being in an interdependency rather than a codependency. Well, yeah, I mean, different words, really, I suppose, you know, different people. And that's why I mention it, because some people don't like the word codependency. But to me, that means interdependency. So however you feel on that one, you know, use whichever word sort of sits better. They become emotionally unstable, you know, and sometimes this is like almost like manic depression, where they can go from being like completely and utterly fatigued and then suddenly something kicks off and it can become, you know, so there's all this going on. Difficulty in crowds as well, because their radar is overextended, right? And they find it difficult because they feel, again, because they're in this hypervigilant, hypersensitive, defensive state, it's very difficult to be around other people. It's basically because um, information and energetically, our orders are extended as well, you know, and that can be both a curse and a gift. You know, for me, it's been more like a curse most of my life. So uh, people pleaser can't say no because I can't set boundaries. Because if I say no, what will they think of me? They mightn't love me as much. You know what I mean? It's, I mean, so, this might be triggering hell out to some of you here, but what I'm, what I'm saying is this is about what's going on within the individual, right, within us, because it represents the imbalance that's in our hemispheres here. So once we can start to look at that, once you start to take the actions to rebalance it, the projection on the screen starts to change as well. It's miraculous. That's the secret of know thyself. Sometimes because we're giving too much energy away, we can neglect our own self-care. We can be unhealthy. Or even our personal hygiene can suffer and such of things and hypersensitivity. So what I'm trying to say here is this is the completely and utterly unbalanced yin and yang it's the unbalanced aspects of a masculine and feminine but it's a dynamic process you know it's going on all the time and what's supposed to happen is we give and take because we both apply our different skills for the purposes of going forward together in life you know and so this is just the thing here i've done that 12 system thing and some people may be balanced in certain areas. If you can imagine this again, sitting on top of the head and actually feeding into our brains sometimes, because it's this central pillar here that needs to be balanced. So sometimes we may need to work on that one there and this one here and everything else falls into line. And I think this is what I would call a, a naive soul where it's got all the lessons to learn. But this one here has already been here a few times. So it's got these balanced, but it needs to start looking at these now and what the imbalance is. So sometimes you might need to stand up for yourself and sometimes you might need to back off, right? And if you can't do either of those, then you're limited. If you're conditioned and programmed to only do one thing, then that's obviously a liability and a limit. But it's about finding out what you have to do not trying to get them to do something that makes you feel better. That's very, very difficult, that one. Um, and I think more and more people are getting the hang of this now, really. So that's where we're up to, really. Yin and yang, when they're working together, they'll fit absolutely perfectly. And once they get to that there, and this could be fem this could be female, female, male, male, doesn't make any difference. It's an energetic process that we're talking about. But just to reiterate again, yin and yang are about masculine and feminine. They're not about, in my view, male and female. This is about subtle energetics and it's information that's happening within the individual. And I'll come out of there now and uh, come back. And I don't know everything, you know, I'm learning myself because when I feel disturbed, I have to take a step back now. And rather than jumping in, right. Oh, the other thing I'd like to say is I've been both of these, right. I was basically most of my life an empath, right. And I would, I would not say things. I would hold back 
because I don't want to upset you by telling you my true feelings. But you know, when I drank, right, I would force my opinion and force myself and other people. Because when I drank, all that contained empath stuff, right, would come out in drink and drugs and any other stuff. And then I'd wake up the next morning, because a lot of this stuff happened in blackouts. I'd wake up the next morning, wonder what the big, big trail of destruction was. And that's because I didn't know how to handle my emotional energy. And that's why being flowing and open and flowing, if you can keep it open and flowing, that that means that both sides are working harmoniously. It doesn't mean to say that there are no other lessons to learn, but at least you've got a better chance, really. And and so over to you, Kristen. I've, I've gone through that very quickly there, but um, what do you think? Oh, I, oh, this is like, you know, we could go hours and hours and days talking about this because there's so many layers to it. Um, I think very often when I hear people talking about these topics, uh, it sounds like a lot of people think that there's two, a person that betrays or that, uh, that shows mostly narcissistic uh, behavior that they have, that they they think very highly of themselves and that they are like really, really in love with themselves. And I think this is a big misconception we have because I think both for a mainly codependent or a mainly narcissistic person, there's a deep, deep lack of self-love. It's just they're coping with it in very different ways. So one who sort of grows up into more of a codependent type of personality traits and, and ways of, of coping with things is the person who uh, adapts to a a family dynamic or a dynamic at a school, for example, with becoming the good person, you know, always feeling how is, how is, you know, things today, how can I adapt uh, the best way so that they like me so that I receive love. So for example, people placing a lot of people saying that people pleasing, like, oh no, but I'm just, I'm just a people pleaser, you know? And I'm like, oh, can we just like stop that? <laughs> because I, I, I've been one myself and I can say that it's from having been one that it's really manipulative being a people pleaser because it's not about the other person. It is about having some sort of a control of what the other person thinks of you. And you put yourself in a victim state by saying that no but i'm just a people pleaser i just can't help it i just want other people to be good but if you would say things like they were maybe other people would not think so highly of you that's the real issue so that's what you have to look at but if you're growing into like sort of more like a narcissistic way of being you're trying to cope with that lack of self-love and lack of really knowing who you are in a contact with yourself in trying to make yourself like it's almost like you're trying to prove to yourself constantly that I'm a big person like I have like this and you're trying to control other people in very different ways like more overt ways I mean there's if you're talking about narcissism you have of course different types of narcissists but there are it's it depends if you're like that as a, like a main personality type of trait or if you're just like you know on the middle of the scale and you have all the traits playing out of course there's big differences here uh, and if it turns into like you know violence or these kind of like extreme things um and then the codependent trying to know but i can save this person or i can fix this person and just sort of feeding into that trying to make this person feel better about themselves while there isn't really a self-awareness saying what is this really about it's actually that I don't know who I am I really don't love myself and I need to look at that and that's where the if you don't have the self-awareness to see that there won't be a change either no matter what someone else is trying to do I think I went a bit all over the place right now no but it's... no no I understand <laughs> it's it's a difficult it's not a difficult subject it's it's a deep subject Complex, really. yes. but you know the soul as I say attracts to it what it needs to learn left next so if you've got no self-worth or no love or no care, you might actually attract a person who's a bully, right? Who's a narcissist and all that, right? That's because the soul attracts to it what it needs to learn about itself. 
right? Yeah. But it's difficult when you're in one of these uh, relationships because you always want to blame the other person and you want, you know, but what, what I've learned is it's something in me that needs to change first before that changes on the outside. It's really difficult, this, because I, I see lots of people, you know, people in the spiritual community, only because I've been this to myself, who were saying, oh, yeah, I wouldn't go with... Here's the interesting thing is, I'll never get in a relationship like that again. You know that one, when you say that? Never again. And then about a week later, you meet this person. Oh, this is the one. And then about two weeks later, when the honeymoon is over, all the same traits start to emerge, right? That's because you never got the lesson in the first place, right? Exactly. Yeah. And also, it's really important, when there is relational trauma, it will be healed in relationships. So we'll probably have one relationship and it just makes everything come to the surface. And then you're going through like a healing phase and you're like, okay, now I'm I'm good. I can go into a new relationship and then something blows up again. And it's and then finally, like we we are not healing completely our relational trauma and all the trauma we have, our relational trauma, let's face it, we don't do that in isolation. We might have parts of our healing journey quite isolated because we are moving through things and there is a lot but then we're coming out again and we have relationships with other people because that's how we actually heal it because it's a dynamic and we don't heal that in you know just without that and it's the same with um like fear of conflicts for example that's also been a huge one in my life and i can really i i made a video on this last week and as I was sitting and just watching sort of the energies of it to see it from a more of an energetic um, viewpoint I suddenly I saw how much of a match that is to a narcissistic type of behavior because when you have a fear of conflict you're actually tiptoeing around you're walking on eggshells because you don't want a potential maybe possibly conflict to arise that is the drama, that is that energy that is feeding, that is the supply for someone with narcissistic traits. So that is actually exactly what they want. And so you're, it's a perfect match. It's like two pieces in the puzzle. I think more and more people will be highlighted this. I think sharing this, because I mean, I, you know, I'm not saying I'm perfect now, but I've learned a lot more about myself because in the end, it's about know thyself. You know, and what actually happens is uh, energetically that will actually then materialize physically. And so everything will change then. And I think that's what's happening for everybody on the planet now. That as this new information comes in, it's actually getting up and it's pushing up all the stuff we've repressed in order that we look at it. But if you're still into that blame finger pointing thing, you're missing the point, you know. And this is where there may be a separation until people let go absolutely. They'll hang on to their old ideas. And it's almost like there's a separation with people who are willing to be guided by their soul who are still attached to their ego. So it's, you know, are your choices in service of yourself with the small S or yourself with the big S? And I think that's what seems to be happening, you know. But there's always hope, you know. I, you know, I know this has been a deep one, this, but um, if it's triggered you, you know, by all means, you know, have a look at it again uh, and just try and say this is i'm only suggesting just put your hands on your heart and just say right please show me what i need to do in order to take the correct action here to realign me with the truth if you don't like talking about god or source or anything if you just use the truth with the big t and say if you're brave enough say under your breath Show me the truth about me. <laughs> exactly. And watch out. Watch out. <laughs> yes, because it is it is self-awareness. And when we see the kind of things that that you can see in some cases with um, like having narcissism, you know, where it comes to domestic violence, uh, extreme control, you know, those kind of things, that is there is a complete lack of self-awareness. There's no questioning of the self, of that person. And then, of course, if if there's a relationship there and the other person is just waiting for this person to change, you can't make anyone change. You have to get out of that and keep working on whatever made you match to that 
what is the trauma bonding what is what is it in you that makes you actually addicted to the ups and downs of the chemistry in the body from constantly being like oh everything is good and now yeah, I can relax and now next time there's just a blow up and there's like what that is what we need to look at it's like realizing that the other person has the full responsibility of themselves they can choose awareness or they can choose not to be aware and the more extreme it is the less self-awareness there is and the less chance for that to suddenly shift there is and we have to take control and and um, our responsibility of ourselves and see the part that is playing. Perfect. I mean, as I say, I do. I put my hand on my heart if I feel disturbed and I really don't know what to do. I'll just say, please show me. And it's almost like a gentle sort of a guiding thing comes in. Sometimes a clear thought will come in. Sometimes it's Joe you'll have to go back because you, you didn't want go and say sorry or go and stand up for yourself or something. And then the little Joe in me goes, do I have to? And I get, yes, you know, you do. Off you go. Because it's about growth. It's about emotional growth, but more than anything else, it's about spiritual growth and realignment with our primary source frequency, our soul's vibration, you know, deep stuff really, but very interesting. We've come, and to, we've come back we've... to the present moment, right? Yeah. And we yeah. dare to actually face the emotions that are coming up in any moment, then we won't, because both of these sort of extremes are about emotional dysregulation. So if we can back, come back to the present, present moment and we actually have that courage, we do deal with, we do, we do face the emotions that are coming up. We won't have to go to those like extreme coping mechanisms to, to move through our days. The good thing about it is if you've been on those extremes and you're balanced with it, it means you can play the whole scale as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a sort of a, a paradoxical situation here where as you've gone through all that and you've let go and you use it, you're allowing these sorts of abilities and experiences to be used in the service of others, right? Then you, you, you've got a bigger toolbox, really. <laughs> We've gone over time, but I mean, we didn't, we don't normally set the time, but have you got time? Have you have you still got some time to do some conversational light language? Oh, I am hearing them. So. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you never say that because they say you don't need to tell him to shut up because he's going on a hell of a lot, you know. <laughs> so let's have a go at that then and uh, see where we go with this. <clears throat> Just for people who don't know, is um, this is more conversational light language. Um, so we'll see what happens next. The <laughs> Wahera <laughs> Ja, <laughs> 
No ajat unta ajat, or ullerat ajat unta haika. Ja tos on jyrun tali, tali sondele moutru kubushe, sara urmatakha siatakha, horan elakhno huru hrapn huru. Va el urru nyar, o irun nyar, o el ei kaya kaan, er kaya kaan taika. Zeri tiro otus, hara sondele moutru iara, hala tatna hurutan nisera pitatashe, hara hara hurru nyar va hurru teme sektaha, ho ho. Kira kata ia lara ayam tak awai kira ni awak kau linca ayam kau ada ayam kau ayam muka. Lebih korang sumpirin. Halal jurunyar tapi sendal bak nak hor. Halal nukte isel enikro dia je. Halal ur ur amit sebera entaklas. Halal entakn ur tu. Walaupun teloron mahai kan ini cuma kan ayat ruham po ayat, po ayat cuma lagu ayat tu ayat apa aku kundi abru tu tu walau tu amal aku jaran lereta kerana lero tu amai kah. Aku suri mau di kalau si me arau tu si me nak kalau sampeka ero ena sampeka ena marur di ma kalau ar ar macam pada entahku keras aru hub akn ero hut. Elur tu anto, alur tu anto, awalur tu aju arat enta anta. Maya tu kosih mai, halai jurma ur 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 masih bagai urum tak neher, siara at nuhur ak nuhut jekna. Ileru anta anta. Awalur ta. Le ronda. Lerunda, What a journey. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Always feel like crying my eyes out after that. In a positive way. It's like a clearance. It's beautiful. Well, darling, thank you. That's been a very interesting session. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm, oh, so, I'm sure. I'm sure. All right. Oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> like a beetroot, like a. <laughs> yes. So um, there's a lot of talk about April the eighth, but you know, to go back to day at a time, I do feel in myself that the energies are increasing more rapidly, more powerfully. Um, but just to make some suggestions to people is, if you don't know, don't worry about it because it's too powerful to understand. So just sort of accept, you know. And try and sit with the feelings rather than react with them and on them. So it's almost like to sit, open your heart up to create more space and allow them to be almost like um, assimilated in the area of your heart. Because my understanding is if it goes from your gut into your head, it will drive you mad. So the softening process, if you like the, um, there's a word, amelioration process, the amelioration and modification and moderation will come through an open and flowing heart. And that's basically what this transformative process is about. You don't have to understand it. You will clearly understand what it means, but probably in about three months time or something. Yes. And ground your body. Oh, absolutely. Every single day. 
So center, ground, and move. Yes. And if you're into dancing at all or anything like that, you can do loads of, <laughs> loads of dancing. Did I tell you I went to a sober rave last Sunday? Three hours of music, trance music, dance music and everything. The sweat was pouring off me. I loved it. Not a drop of alcohol or drugs or anything in sight. It was just a whole load of people just letting themselves go. And it was absolutely nice. brilliant. And I feel that there's going to be more and more and more of those sort of things happening as we sort of get back together in, in clarity, really. Yes. Our bodies need movement and it does clear our energy a lot. It does. Kristin, I love you like mad. Thank you so much. How are you? And you. um and we'll get together again when the time is right. Eh? We will, we will. We will. Have a beautiful so, evening. So thank you everybody and um yeah, hang loose and um the joy of living is our theme. And hopefully we'll see you again in the near future. Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye.